Welcome to another episode of the 13 Tales of Halloween series. Today's story is called The Shadow's Hunger. Elias Thorne had always been a man of solitude. His house, an old sprawling Victorian at the edge of the woods, was tucked far away from town. His walls had witnessed the rise and fall of his writing career. A success born of long nights spent hunched over his desk, ink staining his fingers and candlelight flickering in the drafts. It was the perfect place to be alone, to escape the world and immerse himself in the stories that spilled from his mind. But lately, solitude had taken on a darker edge. It started with a feeling, one that clung to the edges of his thoughts, like a lingering chill. It wasn't the familiar comfort of being alone. This was different. Elias couldn't pinpoint when it had first begun, only that now, every time he stepped into his study at dusk, he felt as though he wasn't entirely alone. The first time he noticed the shadow, he had brushed it off as a trick of the fading light. He'd been at his desk, staring down at the pages of his latest manuscript, when he saw it, just beyond the edge of his vision. A shape, darker than the shadows cast by the dying sun, shifting near the bookcase. He had blinked, rubbed his eyes, but when he looked again, it was gone. Still, the uneasy feeling remained. He told himself it was nothing, a product of too many sleepless nights and too much caffeine. Writers were prone to that sort of thing, letting their imaginations get the better of them. But as the days passed, the shadow returned, growing more distinct each time. It wasn't his shadow. That much was clear. It didn't move as he did. It didn't stretch or shrink with the flicker of the candlelight. Instead, it lingered in corners, hovering just at the edge of his vision, watching, waiting. The second time he saw it, it had been standing at the foot of his bed. He woke with a start, his heart pounding, the room steeped in darkness. The shadow loomed there, a mass of impenetrable black, its shape vaguely human but wrong, its edges blurred like smoke. It did not move. But Elias could feel its presence, could sense its attention on him. He had stayed frozen in his bed, too terrified to breathe, until morning's first light chased it away. That night, he convinced himself it had been a dream, a manifestation of his anxiety, his creative mind twisting the ordinary into something monstrous. But as the night wore on, the shadow grew bolder, its appearances more frequent. Elias could no longer deny it. The shadow wasn't a figment of his imagination. It was real, and it was growing. He first noticed its hunger when the air in his study began to shift. The room, once filled with the warm scent of old books and ink, had become cold, almost oppressive. The fire in the hearth flickered weakly, and no matter how many candles he lit, the darkness seemed to swallow the light. The shadow was always there now, lurching in the corners. Standing just beyond his reach, Elias could feel it, its hunger pressing against him, clawing at his skin, feeding on the growing fear that curled in his chest. He became obsessed with it, his writing forgotten as he spent hours staring at the walls, waiting for the shadow to show itself again. And it did, night after night, each time larger, more defined. It moved with purpose now, slipping through the room like a predator stalking its prey. It had begun to follow him, trailing him from room to room, waiting for the moment when his fear was at its peak. One evening, after a particularly restless day, Elias sat at his desk, the candle flickering beside him. The shadow stood near the window, its form darker than the night sky beyond. He could feel its eyes, if it had eyes, on him. Its presence heavy and suffocating. What do you want? Elias whispered, his voice trembling, the pen shaking in his hand. The shadow did not respond, 
but he could feel its hunger gnawing at the air between them. It was starving, and his fear was only feeding it. Elias turned in his chair to face it fully, his breath shallow. The room felt smaller now, as though the walls were closing in, and the shadow seemed to grow in the darkness, its form shifting like smoke caught in a draft. He could no longer deny what he had come to realize in his darkest moments. The shadow fed on his fear. It had been growing stronger with each terrified glance, each moment of dread. The more he tried to push it away, the more it thrived. His heart pounded in his chest as the shadow took a step closer, its form now towering over him, stretching across the ceiling like a black storm cloud. The room was plunged into freezing cold, and Elias's breath came in shallow gasps, visible in the frigid air. No, he muttered, pushing back from his desk. You can't have me. But the shadow loomed closer, a silent predator, and Elias felt the walls of his mind begin to fray. His fear had grown too strong, too deep-rooted to fight. The shadow had been patient, waiting for this moment, for the exact second when it would consume him. The air around him thickened, and the shadow stretched out, its tendrils of darkness curling toward him, wrapping around his wrists, his neck. He inhaled, his heart hammering in his chest, but no sound escaped his lips. The darkness enveloped him, and his vision blurred the world spinning as the shadow pulled him under, deeper into the cold. It wasn't the solitude that had been his undoing. It was the fear. And now, it would consume him whole. Fabled is produced by me, Vanessa K. Eccles, with music by Katie Coffrin. As always, thank you for listening.